Good afternoon and welcome to our last light service, a service in which we look at the year that has been before us, a quite extraordinary 2020, and ask God's guidance in the year to come. We're going to turn now to prayer. Let us pray. God with us, as the wind comes rushing through the darkness, across miles of wild ocean and batters this building. As the gales howl through the gaps and hurl sleet against the windows, we know that we are held safe out of this raging and wrathful world in a sheltering place, as though in the hollow of your hand, strong and caring God, God with us. We know too that you are present in the power of creation, the energy of wind and water, the majesty of Ben Moor crowned with snow, the mystery of the night sky, the intricate beauty of a shell. On a day like this we feel the beat of your heart. On a night like this we are so close. We hear you breathing, and we are inspired, caught up in your life, strong, creative spirit. God with us, on a day like this, on a night like this, in a place like this, in a world like this, a world of suffering, and hope, of tears and laughter. At the turning of the year, we turn to you. Amen.
chapter 5 verses 16 to 21. Let's listen to God's word. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And we ask God's blessing on this reading from his word. Amen. So what can we say about the year that was 2020. No doubt 2020 will go down as one of the most tumultuous years we have ever experienced. There was no way of knowing at the end of 2019 what the seemingly unstoppable, onrushing train of 2020 would bring. Yes, there was a few cases of a, a deadly flu-like disease in China but nobody ever expected what came. Lockdowns for what seemed like weeks and months on end. Not being able to see family for months. Seals of toilet rolls went through the roof. We weren't able to share a hug with our friends and family. Not being able to comfort friends and loved ones in times of grief, or indeed celebrate with them at weddings or graduations and birthdays. Then we had the Black Lives Matter campaign that took over trying to handle racism like never before. Wildfires ripped through Australia and parts of America. Then there was the craziness of the American elections. But communities came together like never before. Kindness was shown to strangers in a way that was not usual. We appreciated our NHS like never before. Rainbows celebrating them popped up everywhere and in people's homes. We stood on our doorsteps and clapped for them on a Thursday evening for all that they were going through 
on our behalf. Nature thrived in ways that it hasn't done for many years. Air pollution reduced in places like India, where there were fogs and smog, there was clear air, clear skies. The earth began to heal a little, rejuvenated by the time and space we had given it. And people found ways to connect, ways that we could be together, even when we were so far apart. Many people have learnt things about Zoom that they never thought possible. It is a year that we will never forget. But it's time to look forward. We look forward to 2021. If you look up the word resolution in the dictionary, it says a state or quality of being resolute, firm determination, a course of action determined or decided on, and resolving to do something. Now this is a time of year when many of us will make those famous New Year's resolutions. And when we make our New Year's resolutions, we usually start out firmly determined. We usually start out resolutely on this course of action. This is the year I'll lose those extra pounds. This is the year I'll stop smoking. This is the year I'll eat healthily. This is the year I'll be a better parent, a better grandparent, a better friend. And we usually start out pretty well. And we get through January with our resolution still intact. But then February comes. The newness of the resolution fades and the reality begins to sink in. This is hard. What I've resolved to do is hard. It doesn't take long for us to discover or rediscover a simple truth. The words that are the hardest to live by are the easiest to speak. We often make resolutions and break them. Words are easy to speak and hard to live by. And really most of our resolutions are misplaced anyway. They're only designed to make us slightly better. They're only designed to take what we already are and fine tune it, remodel it, just a little bit. Now don't get me wrong, these resolutions are okay. But are these resolutions what God would have us make? Is his goal for us that by this time next year, we would be just slightly improved? Is his goal for us that by this time next year, we would be the same old us, just fine tuned with the rough edges smoothed out? No, that's not what God wants. He's out to do something entirely different. Something far beyond minor renovations. God wants to make us completely new. Not just a slightly better version of what we already are. London businessman, Lindsay Clegg, told the story of a warehouse property that he was selling. The building had been empty for months and needed repairs. Vandals had damaged the doors, smashed windows and thrown rubbish all around the place. As he showed a prospective buyer the property, Clegg took pains to say that he would replace the broken windows, bring in a crew to correct any structural damage and make sure the whole place was cleaned up. But the buyer said, forget about the repairs. When I buy this place, I'm not going to build something completely different. 
I don't want the building. I want the site. And I compared with the renovation God has in mind. Our efforts to improve our own lives are as trivial as sweeping a warehouse that's going to receive a wrecking ball. When we become gods, the old life is over. He makes all things new. All God wants is the sight and the permission to build. There's something refreshing about a new year. The last year, well, we know that it's been awful. We've had our share of failures, heartaches and disappointments. But a new year, a new year gives us a sense of a clean slate, a new start, a fresh beginning. The old year has passed away and a new year has come with all of its potential, all its excitement and all of its possibilities. Deep down inside, we all crave what a new year seems to give us. A clean slate. We desire deep down inside to be given a fresh start, whether it's at home, at school, at work, or even at church. Many of us desire a fresh beginning. The world each year hopes that January 1st will give them a clean slate, a new start. But year in, year out, they're disappointed. But we have been given an amazing gift. We have been given an incredible opportunity. We can have a clean slate of our own. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and give us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We have been given the amazing opportunity to have our slates wiped clean through our reconciliation with Jesus. Mankind has been living in a state of separation from God since the garden. This is who we are as the old creation. We are sinners, selfish, self-centred, destructive. But we have been given the amazing opportunity of reconciliation, of a reunion with him. Paul is telling us that when we enter into a relationship with Christ, we are no longer who we were before. Our slates have been wiped clean and we are made new. May we go into this new year, not looking back at what has gone before, but remembering that the old has gone and the new has come. This is our privilege as kingdom people. And may this joy help us to usher the kingdom a little closer in this coming new year. Let us pray. We again unite our hearts in prayer. God above time, above space, yet with us and in us in Christ, we who are creatures of time and space come to you tonight with thankfulness. We give you thanks for the year that is passing. We thank you for the many ways in which you have touched us. 
in moments of great happiness or in deep distress. You have been present in Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you for the people who matter to us near and far, who have given themselves to us and through whom you have been present to us in their love. We thank you for your church, the community of faith, in whose company we have journeyed, whose friendship we value, whose challenge we welcome, and whose wide boundaries are not defined by time, by space, or by death. As we move now into a new year, give us grace to leave behind our regrets and our failures and any sense of guilt, to let go of the past with gratitude and to leave into your hands the future in faith, to live each moment in joyful discipleship in the company of him who is always Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. And so as we come to the end of our service, we wish you a very happy and blessed new year. And so let us pray together. May your eyes be opened to the wonder of the daily miracles around you and your sense of mystery be deepened. May you be aware of the light that shines in the darkness and that the darkness can never put out. May you be blessed with companions on the journey, friends who will listen to you and encourage you with their presence. May you learn to live with what is unsolved in your heart, daring to face the questions and holding them until one day 
they find their answers. May you find the still, quiet place inside yourself where you can know and experience the peace that passes understanding. May love flow in you and through you to those who need your care. May you continue to dream dreams and to reach out into the future with a deeper understanding of God's way for you. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we journey into this new year and evermore. Amen.